boys and girls, how is everybody today? Good, Good morning, Methodist. What's happening? Hola, niños. You look marvelous this morning. <coughs> Simply marvelous. <clears throat> what? No soundtrack today? No, I learned my lesson. Which was? Don't ever let Olivia and McKenna sing the song they sang for the talent show as a soundtrack of your life. Unless you want to cry all over the puppet bench. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, that doesn't sound quite right to me. It, it's kind of specific, isn't it? Can't you generalize the meaning a bit? Huh? It did so. from them, and we take lessons from them. We do? <clears throat> well, of course we do. Why else would we pay pastors? I don't know. I never really thought about it. Never thought about it, but what do you think we, why do you think we sit up here and tell stories every Sunday? Because it's fun, <clears throat> and I like stories. <clears throat> of course it's fun. And I like them too, but they also have meaning that we can apply to our own lives. How? How what? How do you apply them to your lives? What if I don't know how? You practice. Here, I have an idea. Well, that's a relief. <clears throat> Let's take the story we've been doing all month the story of Jesus and the children. Okay. Good idea. We all know it now, don't we, kids? Where moms are bringing their kids to Jesus so that he can bless them. And at first, the disciples try to shoo them away. But then Jesus gets mad and says, Stop that! Stop! Stop shooing those kids away! For I tell you, kids need me too. God's love isn't just for grown-ups. And more than that, look at them. Kids get it. They understand God's daddiness. And that's something we all need to always remember. And one way to remember it is to keep watching kids and holding them and loving them and including them so that we can keep learning from them. So, Lorenzo, what does that story mean for us? What do we do? Is this a trick question? <laughs> no. Why? I don't know. I'm just not that good at biblical Emil knew it. In fact, I can't even say it. <laughs> Let me see. It's hermeneutics. Oh, hermeneutics. <laughs> now I can say it. <laughs> so, so the story means that I should be holding one of these kids right now. <laughs> you, come up here. <laughs> Sit on my lap. <laughs> oh, much better. Okay. Then, in fact, I think we all should be holding these little muchachos. Here, you grab that one. <laughs> and, uh, you grab that one. You get up. Perfect. Come on, both. Um, holding a kid is part of the story, but that's not all it means. Uh, you, come on up here. <laughs> come join us. <laughs> uh, it means hold two. Uh, I mean, I wonder how many kids Jesus is actually holding. It probably means that, but how are we to know? That's why this interpretation and application stuff is so difficult. It is not. It isn't? No, and it's not just kids that Jesus wants us to hold. You mean I have to hold all them too? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just it. You already are. By volunteering to tell stories here every week 
and sharing your sorrows and your joys and your life and your prayers with all our church family. And not just you, but everyone here is already trying to live out this story. They are here sharing their lives and joys and sorrows and prayers. And we're all trying to experience God's daddiness, holding us all. If you think about it, we're surrounded by attempts to live out and apply this story. Our whole Sunday school is an example. This church and the Sunday school teachers all welcome you kids here every week, teaching and playing with you and praying with you in Sunday school, Sunday school which were started, as a matter of fact, by John Wesley, who was trying to live out this very Bible verse. And we try to live out and apply this Bible verse in our worship services as well, where we want kids to attend with their families. That's right. Instead of putting up a box out there with a sign that says, please deposit children here before entering the sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> and not just kids, but welcoming everybody. Big or fuzzy, green or small, we want all them all to hear convene. <laughs> Big or fuzzy, small or green, we, we want, want all to hear convene. <laughs> <laughs> of the story. Think about it. Jesus began his ministry saying to the children, come unto me. And then in the middle of his ministry, he was saying it to the tired, to the sick, and the heart sick, to everyone, come unto me. And near the end of his life on earth, at the Last Supper, he was still saying it. Come unto me, all you who are weary. Come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, I will give you peace for your soul in me. And he's still saying it to us, right from there to us, to the world, from the cross, Come on to me. So you see, Lorenzo, you do too know what it means to apply these ideas. We've been applying them every single day of our lives. Jesus stories. I guess we do have an app for that. And now, is this another great day to be welcomed into Jesus' loving arms, or what?